So on this project, what I would start to invite the, the um, students to do is to start to add a little dimension to the, the painting. So I would just say, look at these, um, the perches where the birds will sit and add just one shape to each of the perches. So down here, I just divided the um, perch in half. Up here, I'm adding um, triangles. And then maybe in here, I would add some circles. And I would continue through like this um, just to give them directives to expand out this project. So next, I would say, let's look at the um, roof and add a little something to the roof, maybe a letter, your favorite letter. So I put an S there. And what I would do is I would make a repeating pattern with that. And then maybe in the um, top one, I'd write a word. So this one, I'd write love. And I would encourage them to stay with just one color with each one. So we'd see, again, a repeating theme. And then here up top, I would maybe do a C, but I'll do it backwards. So then we begin to look at all things that we're working on, letters, numbers, words, as more like patterns. And then finally, I'd say on the face of the house, come up with something interesting to put there. So I might do something like vines. I'm using watercolor pencils here. If you have those on hand, that's kind of a nice change from the regular watercolor trays. And they get a chance to try some new materials. And add some leaves on there. And then maybe on the next one, I'd add a little more vines, but I'd just maybe make them go in a different direction, maybe with some thorns on it. Because there are some times where um, you'll, you'll run into children that don't really know how to doodle. And so this is a great way to teach them how to um, doodle, um, which is I, I find to be very useful, especially during times of lectures or having to sit for long periods of time to have something to do with their hands is very helpful. And actually, I say even for myself, it helps me to listen um, and retain information better. Adding one more. So just to recap the directives, first I would direct the students to go to the perch and we would break it into shapes. Then the second directive would be to go to the roofs and either use letters or words as a doodle pattern. And then the third would be on the face of the bird houses, and they can choose whatever they like. But with each one of the directives, I would say to stay with a certain color. You can easily do this with markers, with watercolor um, pencils, um, probably not so much with paint because it might the watercolor paint might smear a little bit. Pencils are a little bit easier to um, navigate. Um, also crayons as well. So whatever is at your disposal. Then from here, I would just uh, have them um, trace it out with a black pen or a marker and then begin to design this however they like. If you have watched enough of my videos at Josie's Art School, um, you know how much I love, 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 love playing with color. So I actually, for this lesson, went in a different direction and challenged my students to keep everything white except for the background. And so what I would do with that is I would definitely use a watercolor paint. I mean, you could also use a tempera paint, uh, the kids paint, and use a, um, a sponge brush. A foam brush um, and the reason why I would suggest that you do that is because um, sometimes it takes a while to finish the background obviously and if you have a lot of early finishers depending on the age group um, you, they'll get halfway through and it'll be 
fairly organized up here and then just kind of splotched on at the end so um, I would I would just suggest if you're going to uh, take this lesson where I took it um, uh, just set the um, students up for success so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, just a regular um, paintbrush a larger brush paintbrush and I'm going to start to paint the background 